Hello and welcome to the Untitled Anarchist Seagull channel. My noise gate was acting up, so I'm re-recording this for the third time. Um, this is just going to be a short thing. It's something that I've been seeing a lot on social media lately, and I wanted to push back against. I'm seeing a lot of people say, we've failed uh, in, response, in terms of stopping the genocide in Gaza. But here's the thing, the past tense in that is kind of a problem because the genocide's still going on. Yeah, we haven't stopped it. What we've done has not worked, but we can still, st that doesn't mean we can just give up. The trouble with talking about we have failed, that sort of despair is that it opens the door to inaction. It doesn't really transition into something, into more effective action. It just sort of transitions into not doing anything. There are a couple of good examples of this in recent years. When the IPCC came out with their report saying we had till 2030 to, for the U.S. and other major emitters to get down to net zero if we wanted to avoid the worst possible scenario with climate change, suddenly you got a lot, a lot of articles, a lot of op-eds in the major dominant media saying there's nothing to be done about climate change. We've failed it. Uh, we've tried nothing and, and we've run out of ideas. In other words, nothing can be done and therefore nothing need be done, which is a very convenient position if you are mm, relying for your um, income on oil profits, amongst other things. It, it's great if you don't want anything to change. Similarly, you know, with COVID, that was a very, that very quickly shifted, especially like when the Democrats won and Biden got in, suddenly the whole thing was, you know, we have to live with COVID and we never really taken any particularly effective measures against it. That's even though there are, you know, there was a brief pretense of doing effective things, things that if done properly, which they weren't could have been extremely effective and had been extremely effective in getting the pandemic under control in other countries. But the justification for not doing anything, for just getting rid of every single mechanism that was in place that could have done something to stop this thing, which could still happen, was that we just have to learn to live with it, you know, or die from it or have our lives fucked up by it completely, as the case may be. But what we really just absolutely must not do is anything that might stop it. Now, I'm not saying that people who are saying we failed are trying to do that. I think that they are feeling what a lot of people, myself included, are feeling as we look at this increasing fucking horror, this genocide that keeps on going on and on and on with no end in sight, and nothing we have so far done seems to have any real impact. I would push back on the framing, though because we have failed again, sort of as transitional to inaction. Instead, we should say, what we've been doing so far isn't working. That is a true statement. It is a true statement that invites us to think of things that would work, to think of things we haven't done yet, to think of ways to improve on the stuff that we already are doing, to th ask ourselves, why hasn't this worked? What has it done? Has, you know, has it achieved anything at all? What? And why hasn't it achieved the actual goal that we're trying to pursue, which is to say the end of the genocide? Like, all the symbolic protests and stuff like that, it has achieved something. It has actually created an environment where the previous position of the Biden administration, which was to just openly, flatly reject the idea of a ceasefire in Gaza, was recognized by Biden's handlers to be just PR toxic waste that he couldn't possibly be associated with. And so their conclusion from that, since their goal is to change as little as possible while, appear, while at the same time kind of calming down the public outrage, was to pretend to be supporting a ceasefire, to rename the thing that they were willing to accept, which is a temporary pause in the genocide, to rename that a ceasefire and then pretend that actually they and Israel are they're, they're cool with the ceasefire, but you know Hamas is the at fault. Now that is an effect. 
It didn't get what we are trying to get. It doesn't get what we absolutely need to be fighting for. Because, I mean, th this is a fucking genocide. It needs to be stopped. We're in the country, you know, if you're in the U.S. in particular, you're in the country where governability is making this possible. You know, the fact that not, uh, the fact that shit isn't just utterly kicking off in the U.S., on a level, uh, you know, on the level of, say, the uprising against racist police terror in 2020, for example, is what makes it possible to continue this. The fact that governability and profitability are not being threatened makes it possible to continue with this. To, uh, there is no cost being imposed on these massive arms transfers to Israel on a practically just-in-time basis without which this genocide would ground into a screeching halt in a hurry. But we haven't exhausted our options, have we? That supply chain runs right through this country. Disrupting that supply chain is an option that has not really been exhausted. You know, there were some early attempts to stop ships and things like that very early on in the genocide, but that didn't end up going anywhere and it didn't really get escalated in the U.S. Um, you know, things like the, the D9 bulldozer, which you see all over Gaza, which is being used to just wreck people's, uh, you know, entire city blocks and things like that, that's made in Peoria, Illinois. Like, you literally, can, Israel does not get a D9 bulldozer from Caterpillar without it passing through the U.S. from the Midwest to wherever it's embarked on ships or planes to be sent over to Palestine to ruin people's lives with. You know, all these other things, uh, you know, all these other things are coming from the U.S. That is a supply chain that is essential to this genocide. We haven't really done a whole lot to disrupt it. Even delays, even just, you know, random delays could potentially play a major role in this because it would make the arms supply to Israel less reliable and they need a constant flow of arms to do what they're doing. There's also other stuff that was never really an option in previous genocides. Like, there's a lot uh, that is made of these videos of these fucking IDF ghouls in Gaza uh, doing all this depraved shit, you know, rummaging through the underwear drawers of murdered women like it's a fucking unboxing and all this hideous shit that they're putting up on TikTok and their Twitter and their social media and stuff like that. And people talk about just how depraved that is and how it just shows what a genocidal campaign this is, and they're quite right to do that. But the thing is, these pricks are doxing themselves. The pricks who are doing this stuff on the ground are doxing themselves right in front of us. The, these, these channels on which they are posting this shit are not one way. They are giving us their names. They're giving us their real identities. They're giving us all sorts of ways, uh, potentially, to have a very direct influence on them. And that really is not being, you know, including, for example, potentially, if they are they hold like citizenship in another country, say a yeah, particularly European country, because the rules of criminal procedure allow for private prosecutions in a lot of German, a lot of European countries, or at least allow it, you know, private parties to force a criminal prosecution in a number of countries, which you can't do in the U.S. Because the, in the U.S. they have absolute discretion, prosecutors have, whereas they have what's called the legality principle in Western Europe, where if there is evidence of an offense having been committed, a prosecution has to follow in most cases. And in Germany, for example, you can actually sue to force a prosecution. And private parties, a lot of the time, can actually start a prosecution under universal jurisdiction, for example, in various countries. So, there, I mean, that's something. There are lots of options, is my point, that we have not exhausted. We have not left every stone. You know, we have lost, left a lot of stones unturned because the tendency has been to stick to, like, sort of peaceful, symbolic protest. And, of course, 
the repression against that has been massive. Like, for for the, what these protests have been, the level of repression has been on a level that where you have to go back, like, half a century to find analogs. That's true. But we need to be willing to always be constantly looking for the next, next escalation, the next level we can take this to, the next uh, angle that we can use. We need to be constantly evaluating what we have done, what effects it has and has not had, and how we can change that to make it more effective, what other things we can do that might be more effective than what we already are doing. What we cannot do is say, we've failed when the genocide is going on, because that just leads to people feeling that, you know, they, that they can just do nothing. We need to be constantly thinking of things that can be tried, and then seriously trying them, and then trying other shit. And we need to be applying that to everything. We're dealing with all sorts of just like historical level, survival level threats presented by capitalism. Like Gaza is one of them. After all, if fucking the US ruling class get away with that there, we, they will probably find other times when it might be useful for them to just exterminate an entire small area <coughs> of people who are inconveniencing them in some way. All, uh, and the attitude in terms of tactics should always be not, we failed, but that last thing we did isn't it. We need to think of new stuff. So that's all. Uh, I will be back on the last JaproniCon uh, tomorrow, Friday, at 11.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. See who's on their bullshit this week. But I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to just push back against this feeling of despair that I think is setting in amongst a lot of people and directed in what I think is a more productive angle in a more productive direction. So that's it for me. Hope you've been having uh, as good a week as you can have under these fucked up circumstances. And I look forward to seeing you on Friday.